e-commerce stocks have been all the rage during quarantine. Amazon, Wayfair, Overstock, and more. Don't forget Walmart. Now the next step might be drones. According to the team at ARK Invest, Tasha Keeney is an analyst at the firm joining us to discuss a report you put out, Tasha, on drones. It's pretty cool. I'm wondering because I order a lot of Amazon. I've been hearing about drones, but I still don't see them. Is that because I'm in downtown Chicago and there's regulation or is that just because they haven't penetrated the delivery space quite yet? Well, regulation has been holding up drones uh, for some time now. Uh, you know, I, I also cover autonomous cars, which you and I, Oliver, have talked a lot about. Um, but with drones, uh, what's really been holding, held, holding that technology back is regulators, and actually particularly in the U.S. The FAA has been saying for years now, I mean, over five years, that they wanted to come up with regulations to address drones, um, and they're really just starting to do that. So the exciting news is Amazon just got this uh, Part 135 approval. It means it can run a drone airline. So what that means is that you and I could get packages delivered to us for less than a dollar, or likely we wouldn't even see that cost. We'd just get our stuff cheaper. Um, and I think this could totally change consumer shopping behavior. So what's the timeline? Do we know what the legislative timeline is going to be or who's who wants it? Who doesn't want it? Is it like a hard no or is it an eventuality? So, so I think um, I think it's definitely an eventuality. Um, so so Amazon just got this approval. So basically regular but previously they had you know, done just certain test flights in specific areas. And by the way, a lot of companies are looking at this. UPS is also aggressively partnering with startups, with drone companies, trying to do drone delivery. Domino's has done a few different types of robotic delivery. So I think this is definitely on the horizon. We've just been waiting for regulation to catch up. I'd say this is the early innings of seeing that that regulation catch up. So Amazon still wants to do a lot of safety and testing you know, before a full uh, scale launch, but you could certainly imagine that there'll be sort of more small pilots happening. For instance, UPS is doing some pilots right now um, on hospital campuses. Uh, they're starting to deliver things like prescriptions with drones. Um, so, so I think uh, the exciting thing is, is that we're, we're sort of just on the brink of this. And it's really important that we're seeing US regulator uh, start to say yes to this because these companies have been previously testing their technology abroad. Um, we had seen Amazon go to the UK Okay. Google had gone to Australia to test, um, but now you know that they're getting the green light in their home country. I, I think that's really significant and, and super exciting for you and I as consumers. Now, you've got a chart here that shows your projections, e-commerce share of retail with drones right now. Uh, the latest data we have from 2019, about 15%, it looks like, uh, that is happening. Uh, e-commerce, uh, is this non-drone? Help me understand this chart. What are we looking at here? Is this how big it's going to get? Yeah, e-commerce at the end of 2019 was about 15% of total retail spend. Um, I, I think see. that could go to 60% by 2030. And actually in this chart, you can see a good amount of that, actually more than half could be delivered by drone. Got it. Um, so, so this could, again, I think it'll totally change shopping behavior. You can picture, you know, maybe you forgot something at the store. Well, if a drone can get it to you in 30 minutes or less for basically free, um, you know, you might start ordering things a lot more often to your house because that's extremely convenient. Um, so, so, you know, we, we think that this could be an industry worth over a hundred billion by 2030, but more importantly, it'll give players like Amazon this really solidified position as a logistics Goliath. Um, cause you know, they always want to delight the consumer. This is just another way to do that. Okay, so the red we're looking at here is non-e-commerce retail and then the exactly. growth projectory out to 2030. So the purple and the black combined e-commerce and then drones pick up some of that. So it is a longer term game. What's the best way to invest in it? Do you just stick with Amazon on the margin expansion that'll happen or stick with the delivery companies? Or can you actually buy drone stocks? Or I know you mentioned some of the mapping companies as well. Like, are there unknown plays that are exposed to this more directly and with higher beta than the delivery companies? So for now in the public markets, it's mainly the companies that are experimenting and could use drones for logistics like UPS or Amazon. Um, a lot of these drone startups are currently private, 
Um, but one thing you could certainly see happening is maybe they get acquired by these public companies. Um, and I, I, I think that, uh, you know, what what's actually the research that I've done has showed that the services side of this business um, could actually be a lot more profitable than just making the hardware itself. Um, so companies that are basically able to capitalize on this drone delivery platform are the ones you want to look out for. And by the way, we're talking about e-commerce. I mean, drones are going to infiltrate a lot of other areas. I think they'll deliver food. Um, we're seeing drones being used more and more for surveillance, things that you used to use a helicopter for. Helicopters are extremely expensive. It's, it's very inexpensive to fly a drone over, say, um, an agriculture, a, a crop field, or like an oil site, and and um, take those images. So, so there um, are some military drone companies, a company called Air Environment, for instance, uh, that are moving into the commercial space for those other commercial use cases aside from delivery. Interesting. Okay, so some of the companies that right now are focused on drone making for a certain target might be shifting over to this. Uh, you mentioned some of the mapping revenues, the parcel drone sales. We we're just looking at that chart. Uh, a big uh, move over the next uh, basically 15, 20 years. Uh, so it seems like uh, this is a pretty interesting market, but publicly traded options still somewhat limited. Tasha, do you guys have these in your ARC funds right now? We do. We have some of the military drone companies like Air Environment, like I mentioned. FLIR is, is another uh, military company that's starting to do a lot of uh, sur surveil or another sort of government based company that's doing a lot of surveillance imaging applications. Um, and then, of course, we hold players like Amazon that that sort of run the logistics network. Um, and actually, you know, you mentioned mapping. Um, Amazon has so many patents for drones. It's really fascinating if you look through them. So they actually, one of them is um, basically, it, it would give Amazon, if you signed up for say like a home security solution with Amazon, then you could give it the option to um, basically image your house with drones maybe that are delivering packages um, and you could, you could sign up for that service. So not only would that give Amazon a ton of data um, but you as the customer may want that service because it's, you know, better protection um, on your home and uh, it, it could be sort of the most advanced security system out there. Mm. All right. Uh, love the numbers. Tasha, the last point, though, is more kind of like a, uh, uh, you know, just a question about how this is going to work. Uh, well, how does it work? Are the drones going to show up and like we can't touch them? And uh, how do, I mean, it's just going to be drones flying everywhere. You use the word infiltrate. I feel like that's going to freak some people out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, that's, that's a good question to ask because that's, that's one of the reasons that there's a lot of safety considerations with drones and the regulation's been a little bit slow. Um, but what you could imagine is say, you know, I live here in New York City, maybe on the, the roof of my building, if I live in a multi-unit building, mm. um, there's a little drone pad. Um, if you're in the suburbs, uh, you know, you might want to maybe designate a part of your lawn or something. And actually, so Google's done some sort of innovative um, designs where they've thought about this. They actually drop something from a string from the drones, for instance, so you don't jam your hands up into the propellers. No one, well, no one wants that. Um, but I, I, I think sort of it, that's, that's one of the interesting things to think about is it's actually reimagining even sort of how we use our homes and allocate space. Um, but sort of the infrastructure to support this is, is, is a, a consideration. All right, exciting stuff. Uh, you guys are living in the future there at ARC. Uh, appreciate it, Tasha. Thanks for the thoughts, as always. Drones, the next step for e-commerce, a potentially big market ahead for, according to the team at ARC Invest, Tasha Keeney's an analyst.